Hey, um, I got an idea for like a nerdy Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy joke. It can take some work. If you can think of a good way to say it, then let me know uh, as soon as possible. Well, really, it's just a structure for an idea. No, no, it's not even a joke, really. The 42nd Amendment is the right to life, the universe, and everything. Oh, man. It's a good one. Um, you see, in our system of government, we have num we have a, we have a set of rights that we just happen to number. Number 42 should be the right to life, the universe, and everything. We have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, but that doesn't do us any good outside of the country give us the right to life, the universe, and everything, then we can have our rights and keep them everywhere. So long as we're abiding by the law, we should be allowed to do almost anything. If you, if you can see where I'm going, I, I know I said it sounded like a joke. It's just joking around, really. Life, life liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, life, the universe, and everything, eh, it's a... Uh, it's not so, uh, not so similar, but my idea was that life, the universe, and everything is 42, so the right to life, the universe, and everything is the 42nd Amendment of the United States Constitution, or it should be. But then again, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is not as popular here in the States as it is elsewhere. In fact, not much kind of literature is popular here in the United States as it is as elsewhere. Um, really, I don't know why I said it was a joke. I mean, it's very serious. And um, in case you're wondering about this shot, uh, I'm laying on the floor. And uh, it's really cool. Let me show you how I got this. See, I took my tripod extended the, one of the legs and attached a weight to it. So really, um, it's just a very low angle shot. It's it's probably going to be used uh, quite a few times in some of my other work. Um, these are like a couple of five pound weights I we had hanging, we had just laying around. You just got to be very careful about it. Cause you never know what um you got you just gotta be careful with this thing because uh setting the camera on it and taking it off of it kind of upsets the balance and it causes it to wobble a little bit. Speaking of balance, um uh speaking of balance I think that the balance of the universe, of how things go one way and they come out another way, it's a uh, kind of an argument or a debate my brother and my cousin had the other day where they said that, uh, no, no, it wasn't from that. I forget what I'm saying, but, uh, but, um, no, it was from a movie, SLC Punk. Good movie. Watch it. I dare you. Well, they said that there's, um, the thing is, he believed, the character believes in anarchy, which is a system of government with, a system with, of system without government, but it's, uh, kind of runs around in circles, and after, a series of explanations, he's back at calling it a system, a government without any government or any political power. The little fights that they get in with, uh, with, with, uh, redneck skinheads, mods, and everybody else, they're just smaller, cheaper versions of war. War establishes power, power establishes government, government establishes stuff like, uh, stuff like religion, capitalism, and socialism. And then you got the system. It's all the system again. And he's stuck round, running around in circles saying that he wants no government at all. But really he's establishing his own system. It, it's just running around. But my point in this sort of thing is that there is a balance between everything. No matter what, it's always going to have a system to it. It can seem chaotic, but it's not. Something lives, it dies, it decomposes. The atoms go to the earth, become chaos, and then come back together to form something else. It's the whole conservation of mass that you learn in chemistry, or probably will learn in chemistry, or probably never learn because you dropped out. But the point is, 
everything is as it should be because that's how it became it's really uh it's really kind of uh it's really kind of not that complicated when you think about it because if you know the basic structure of the conservation of mass you can understand everything about about how how everything goes from structure to disorder then back to a structure to a system to government how it, how everything will just fall rise and fall climbing and slipping everything will always do it it always goes in the cycle like the global warming thing it gets colder then it gets hotter colder hotter it just keeps on going like that it's always done that and we still want to blame ourselves for it yeah we're helping it but it's it's natural it's gonna happen eventually and in a few billion years well not billion a few million years whatever race is running the world then is gonna say we're making we're causing global cooling you know it's it's gonna happen it's gonna happen again and it's gonna happen opposite in the opposite direction no matter what it's gonna happen with or without us it's just not gonna happen as strongly the whole thing is saying that human interaction is what causes all of this stuff and that that it's God giving his final judgment to to, to man also from SLC Punk I will quote that not quite as much but almost as much as I quote the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy there's a lady in SLC Punk who says that uh that there's so many floods and earthquakes because God is is uh, is going to begin retribution against Satan's followers but the, one of the characters one of the main characters kind of debates there have been floods and earthquakes since the beginning of time and she w still wants to complain that it's that it's so many of Satan's followers. Everything, everything in the universe cannot be explained by a deity or demigod or any kind of higher power. But people will try. They will still try to do it. They don't want to believe that things are the way they are naturally. They want to believe that it, things are the way they are supernaturally because a higher power made them that way. I believe they are that way because that's just the way they are. Things came out in a random sequence of events following the Big Bang. I do not really believe that God created the earth in seven days and only been here seven million years or whatever. Seriously, Christians are obsessed with the number seven. Except for the twelve apostles, but that's completely different. Uh, the whole point the whole point of this is you can't really just blame, a, you can't really just give credit for the universe to God. It's all because everything runs in a certain way and it always will with or without you giving a name to it. You don't have to, you don't have to believe that this is some sort of a, some sort of all part of a plan that an all-knowing being has set out. And if you think it is, you're pretty stupid trying to stop it because if, if it really is part of a plan that an all-knowing, all-seeing, all-powerful being is, is, uh, is controlling, if you want to stop it, you're gone. He'll take you out. You don't really, you can't really just think that, uh, that if you go against God, he, he will forgive you. God's a jerk. You see all, you've seen the stuff he does to this world. He created every, if you really believe he created everything, he created hate, he created violence, and he created Britney Spears. So, God is not really forgiving. He is a very unforgiving being if he were to exist, and if he were in control, and if you care. I don't. Until next time.